We are back once again with these two handheld devices, the ROG Xbox Ally and also the ROG Xbox Ally X. We installed Bezine on it and took it for a spin. Yes, Bezine is now compatible with the brand new ROG Xbox Ally and the ROG Xbox Ally X. On Reddit or anywhere else online for that matter, someone will definitely say that Bezite is a much better operating system for your handheld device. As a quick rundown, Bezite is a Linux operating system built on Fedora's distro, behaves similarly to how a Steam Deck with SteamOS 3.0 and above will be, plus a handheld daemon to handle all of the Ally specific controls and features, plus a few tweaks here and there as well. So I switched over to Bezite for about a week or so and most of the features will work out of the box though there are some small issues that I have encountered. In this video, we're gonna talk about the performance difference, if any, between the Xbox full screen experience versus Bezite. Please do hit that like and subscribe button as we're trying to hit 100k subs soon and your help is greatly appreciated. So. My entire installation process for Bezine is fairly simple though I did hit a few snags here and there. This is not an installation guide, I'm just sharing my experience. For my particular case, I just swap out the entire SSD because it's just much easier to do so and I can hop back into Windows to do some further testing if I need to do so. You can follow a full teardown guide video, link at the description below because it's just really that easy to open up the ROG Xbox Ally and Ally X to swap out the SSD. Once the SSD is swapped, I installed Bezite. Head into the download page and select the appropriate image alongside whichever desktop GUI that you like the most. I chose GNOME because I just like it that way and then write the ISO file into a USB stick using Rufus in DD mode. DD mode works for me while ISO mode did not, so that's why I chose DD mode. And since we have two USB Type-C slots on the ROG Xbox Ally and the Ally X, I just plugged the USB stick into one of it and then the other port, I plugged in the charger. So I don't have to worry about the battery going flat while installing Bezine, even though that's unlikely gonna happen. I just follow through the entire process and there we go, Bezine is installed. When it boots up, Bezine is essentially using SteamOS's interface from top to bottom. The Xbox button will bring up the HHD, also known as the handheld daemon, and we can select what the Armory Crate button does as well, though I just leave it in default as I want to bring up this menu. I don't know what this menu is called, but it houses many things that I personally will use on this device. Basically, if you used a Steam Deck before, then this will basically function 100% the same. All Steam games can be installed via this menu, of course, and we can also install games that aren't from Steam through desktop mode as well. Now, in desktop mode, since I chose the GNOME interface, this is how it looks like. And once we quit the gaming mode, this is how Steam will look like. Yeah, it's that familiar looking interface that we've come to know so many years before. Of course, installing any games outside of Steam means that we'll have to tinker with many other things like forcing the compatibility layer to use the Proton Experimental or else um, yeah, the app just wouldn't launch at all. This is just some of the quirks that we have to deal with if we are gonna use Linux to run Windows apps and games. But in this test, we're gonna use all Steam games to test the performance difference instead. And speaking of the performance difference, let's now talk about it. I installed a total of 4 games on Windows and Bezite for these two devices, and let's bring out the graphs. We'll start off by talking about the ROG Xbox Ally X first. We did these two sets of tests with it plugged into the charger, so the ROG Xbox Ally X can boost up to a 35 watts maximum. Can we actually bring out more performance by just simply switching over from Windows to Bezite? In fact, yes, Bezite being such a super lightweight operating system is actually performing better than Windows 11 with the Xbox full screen experience. Some games did not show any difference while some games actually showed some difference. While it is a tiny difference, it is repeatable and measurable. Oh, I should also declare that the ROG Xbox Ally X that I have here is actually using the debloated version of Windows 11 using RefWire's script. 
I'll leave the link down in the description below and do remember to hit that like and subscribe button while on your way there as well. And um, that script is very easy to use and you can do it on your own Ally as well. And then comes the ROG Xbox Ally. It's a low powered device that is aimed for 720p AAA gaming. So can we actually get extra FPS by switching over to Bezite? Again, we are plugging it into a charger so that it can get the full 20 watts of power that it needs, even though it is also at 20 watts while on battery as well. Either way, for low powered chipsets like the AMD Ryzen Z2A in the ROG Xbox Ally, switching over to Bezite yields a much bigger difference compared to the more powerful ROG Xbox Ally X. However, it seems like there's a bug in the Shadow of the Tomb Raider while in Bezite, there is a notice popping up that shows you, hey, there's an issue with the CPU governor and whatnot. I can't really remember the notice exactly, but it's this notice here. And yeah, the FPS number points to that being an issue. Surprisingly, the same notice also appears on the ROG Xbox Ally X while in Bezite, but that doesn't affect the performance at all. So I'm not really sure what's going on there. There are a lot of other benefits that you can get if you switch over to Bezite as well. We can technically either get more FPS or more battery life depending on the game that we are playing and what's the level of performance that this game actually needs from the handheld device. 2D platformers like Silksong for example will yield a better battery life while demanding games like Forza Horizon 5 will give us more FPS. One big advantage of Bezite is that the device can actually go to sleep and wake up nearly instantaneously without any bugs or glitches. Windows can't do this even on the latest Xbox full screen experience interface. And let's not forget about the absence of bloatware on Bezite. Well, it technically still has a few pre-installed apps, but all of them are gaming related apps since this entire Bezite distro is made for handheld devices like this. Windows, however, well, it has its own reason to include apps like Microsoft Office and all that jazz when you freshly unbox this device. On Bezite, we can also switch between gaming mode and desktop mode without doing a full restart, which is a huge step up over the Xbox full screen experience as well. But Bezite does have some bugs right now, for example, the HHD doesn't have an option to change the joystick RGB options. We can change it to the beta version of the HHD through this option and yeah, then we can change the RGB joystick options. But again, those are just some of the weird bugs that are present right now. Also, the device buttons customization doesn't seem to do anything as of now. By the way, I have no idea how to take a screenshot while using Bezite. So if you have any ideas, please let me know down in the comment section below because I'm, I'm screenshotless right now. Well then, since Bezite is technically better, should we switch over then? Well, not so fast, Your Honor. While the performance is indeed better on Bezite, in most cases, you have to really know what you're getting into before installing Bezite. If all your games are on Steam, then yeah, just go ahead. Bezite is actually a much better option for you. However, if you're like me and you want to play games like Xenozone Zero on a handheld device, then that game isn't available on Steam and I will have to go through a bunch of hoops just to get it installed and running on Steam OS. Well, in this case, Bezite, but the installation process is the same. I know two methods to do it, either using Lutris or just use back Steam. I chose the latter because I'm just more familiar with that method. And another big caveat while using Linux for gaming is the lack of support for any games that uses kernel anti-cheat. It just doesn't work. This mostly affects competitive gamers only, so if you are one of them, then yeah, you have to keep note of all this stuff. For me, these aren't issues. They are inconveniences, sure, but they are the kind of things that only need to be dealt once. The benefit far outweighs the trouble, so I think it's worth to switch over to Bezite. Of course, you will have to be tech savvy enough to deal with all of these things before actually delving into the world of Bezite, but there are lots of tutorials online, on YouTube, and also Reddit to help you out. The biggest thing that we'll lose when switching over to Bezite is the access to Xbox Game Pass. Yeah, 
if you are subscribed to the Xbox Game Pass, then Bezite should not be in your consideration at all because you will need a Windows operating system device to use Xbox Game Pass. And that is all that we have to share with you here in today's video. Let us know what do you think about the performance difference between Bezite and Windows 11 with the Xbox full screen experience. And will you switch over to Bezite? Why and why not? Let me know down in the comment section below or add us on social media. All the links are down in the description below. And also, please do remember to hit that like and subscribe button. And we'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.